let's burn through that. My name's Dax. My name's Nick. And welcome to the Coal Room, our YouTube rugby chat show. So, uh, where do we start this weekend? Um, do we start at the <laughs> Springboks uh, game against Wales and Washington, or do we go elsewhere in the world? Well, very good Super Rugby weekend. Um, the Aussies team finally beat another New Zealand team, even though they were, they were the Blues again. <laughs> I'd just like to remind all Springbok fans out there, you know, life could be worse. You could be a Blues fan. Oh! Yeah, um, I actually got, uh, Megan actually showed me like a really, really uh, funny clip that goes, this is how we sum up the Blues season so far. So, awarded a penalty on their 5 meter line, in the 81st minute, tap they decide to tap and go, pass it to the fire half, who in turn passes it behind him with a no look pass, and no one's there, <laughs> and it rolls into the dead ball line. Yeah. I mean, that literally sums up the Blues weekend, or the, the entire season, to be quite honest. But, um, Otherwise, it was a good game. I got that uh, Highlanders hurricane, Hurricanes game a bit wrong. Yeah, we both did it. Uh, I, went, I went the other way around, but uh, hey, you win some Blues Sundays. Yeah, and uh, high scoring Brumbies and uh, Sunwolves game. 41-31, okay. uh, 31, I think, in a bit. Two? To the, to the Brumbies. Damn And then, yeah, the Chiefs lost to the Crusaders in a real uh, landing. I, I, I predict that one. And then the uh, Reds also had a high scoring game. Yeah, they lost to the Warriors. Yeah. But uh, those, you know, those Australian New Zealanders, we don't really care too much about them. Well, it, 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 it goes to the basic question, why do we start like a week earlier and then a week later? So that we could have this test. Yeah. Well, I remember it happened last year with the British Lions going to New Zealand. They started earlier. Yeah. I think it should just be like a standard thing so that each, all of them get like a two week build up period for their, for their respective incoming tours. Yeah. I mean, it makes more sense to do that. Mm. You know, I mean, it's a bit of a silly setup, to be quite honest. What isn't a silly setup? Yeah, this is uh, this is Sanzar, and I mean to have the Springboks play Wales in Washington D.C. to then come back to then come back to play England. Yeah. In Johannesburg. Yeah, that 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 to me is just rubbish, and I mean. But I mean that showed if you watch the Springbok game, it it really was. We have spent two days on the field. Yeah. Together. Pretty much. I mean, Rusty and the team only flew out on Thursday, I think it was. Because he wanted to get everybody together, yeah. do some training camps and all that type of stuff. So one, they couldn't do any proper defensive training drills. They couldn't do any tactical training drills. Um, then they had an 18-hour flight from from South Africa all the way to Washington, D.C. Yeah, I mean, where this cost is nice, but I mean... Yeah, where it was pouring with rain, and I mean... Well done to Wales for climatizing better than us, but I mean, well, it we, was a shit show of a match. Yeah, oh, it was stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. That like the handling in terms of the spring box was nowhere to be seen. Yeah, our box kicks were shocking. Um, there were some really, really good instances in the game where I thought, like you know, players showed some potential. The wings played well. Yeah, the wings. Scored a try, except uh, Travis Ishmael um, might have a shoulder injury after that last attempt of the try, and then subsequently buggered up two <laughs> defensive uh, catches, should I say, uh, one leading to the Wel Welsh final try. Because what happened? Robert Pierre gets charged down. Charged down. We are on a five meter line. We somehow get the ball back. Pass it back to Robert, who gets charged down again. The ball goes in the direction of Travis, who kind of knocks it into the in-goal area and the Wales score a try. And you kind of go, okay, that that I can understand that that's a moment's lapse or yeah. you weren't expecting it, but this is rugby and it's professional rugby. You should expect everything. Everything and anything. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know what? We can we can see what happened in this game and we can talk for mm -hmm. hours about what was right, what was wrong. At the end of the day, it came down to out of a squad of 20, what, 6 players, 23 players? Well, 26 went across. 26 went across. Out of that 26, 13 were uncapped. Yeah. Um, 6 uncapped starters, 
what is it, further five or six on the bench. Seven on the bench, that far. So, it's literally kind of like, this was, this was essentially the South Africa A team. <coughs> it was basically the South African B and C team. Yeah. Uh, to be quite honest. And, I mean, like... By, the, by A team, I meant like, you know, South Africa, SAA. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there were some cool players, like uh, Kitsov, there was Peter Steff, who was there. Um, there's Jesse Krill, there was oh, Alton Nike is proved why he shouldn't be in the Springbok jersey this weekend. Um, but I mean, like, the biggest problem that, look, there were periods defensively where we were really, yeah. really good. And then it, there were just like soft moments that Wells turned into really, really good attack, up uh, into really, really good attack and scored re two really, really good tries. Our scrums didn't do too badly, besides the constant resets. And then our lineups didn't too bad, didn't function too badly. I mean, our lineups were pretty, pretty good. I think that was just memories of the game coming back. Yeah, it was a very, very boring game. I will give it that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm hoping next weekend, well, Saturday, not next weekend, well, next weekend as well, but Saturday is at least a decent game. Um, I'm going to definitely be watching this one live, not like waking up in the morning to review it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop off the, the missus at the airport and speed back home, you know, 140, just me. <laughs> Park the car, sprint well, off, sit down. She's traveling internationally, right? Yes. So she needs to be there three hours before the flight leaves. Yeah, so her flight's at half past seven, so she has to be there at around half past four. So that's literally, drop her off at three. <laughs> literally just like, <laughs> handbrake turn into the parking lot. <laughs> Open the door, throw everything out. <laughs> Cheers, love. Bye. <laughs> that, that's too cruel. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, um, I've read a lot this week about Eddie Jones. Yeah. Um, he talks bringing, a good game. He, he talks a, a good game, um, and so do um, a lot of the players. I saw one saying that England are looking to stick it to the South African bullies. Oh, look. We're in a regrowing, well, in a re, uh, re re planning and rebuilding phase at the moment. Yeah. So, one, we're with a new coach, one with a new captain, one with a whole bunch of new players, which we're going to bleed into the, yeah. into the World Cup rundown. So, heck, if they beat us in the first game and we trollop them in the next two games, yeah, I'll be I'll be happy with that. To be yeah. quite honest, I think it's definitely going to be a good matchup, considering that they also have a bit of a down. Oh, look at it this way. So we lost 22, 20 to Wells in Washington D.C., where we had to travel eighteen hours to get there with a with a largely untested group of players. Yeah. To to finish twenty two twenty against Wells, I'll give it that, considering. They were also largely like a bit of unknown to was their team, team yeah. you know, I mean, I wouldn't expect much, considering they also had to travel, yeah. they'd had to travel this, but England went and faced the Barbarians and got hammered, yeah, I mean, 65, 63-35 or something. When you lose to the Barbarians, that's a bit embarrassing. It is embarrassing, and the thing is they had a majority of the team that was going to go over to yeah. us, so yeah. Talk a good game, England and Eddie. Well, we'll see on the field. Let's not let's yeah. not have big mouths here because we could be licking our wounds next next week. We could. I mean, we really, really could. But a core of our team stayed behind to work together. Yeah, to so work yeah. together and run through the drills, run through the defensive, yeah. and def and attacking tactics. So a lot of the big names that we're going to actually, I mean, we could have sent our big name team. Across, but they would have been buggered. They would have been buggered when they came back, and then to face England. I mean, which begs to 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 the, to say, is it a good idea to do these things? Considering it was a forty-five thousand seat stadium in Washington. Yeah. They only got twenty-one thousand people in the door. Do, I mean, is it even warranted to do these silly one-off matches? Well, sorry, did say that they they made a profit off the game. No, they needed to break to break even. They needed twenty six through the south, twenty six thousand through the door. Uh, I read that they they said that they were um, 
they were at least breaking even or making some money off of it, hence why they didn't cancel it. Okay. Still a bit silly though. Yeah. I mean, they could do a lot more locally to try and raise funds for yeah. the Surrey Foundation, to be quite honest. Yeah, but anyway, um, I think let's, let's have a look at what's happening this week. Yeah. It's not just South Africa versus England. We've got, some we've got New Zealand versus France. Oh, yeah, we've been in France, huh? And then we've Have you got... ever translated the French anthem? No. It is a hectic anthem. It goes on about like drink the blood of our enemies and <laughs> it is a it's a pretty beastly anthem, not gonna lie that one. Yeah, so the so the French are playing New Zealand, um, Wales are playing Argentina. Yes. And then Australia Ireland, isn't it? Uh, I think Ireland is going to be touring Australia this year. Could be wrong. Or is it Scotland? Okay, so I don't know what that is. Anyway, Saturday. Alright, well let's 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 do all of these now quickly. Very quickly. Okay. Fiji versus Romania. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Fiji. I mean, oh, no, they draw. I don't want to draw. Sorry, I kept the wrong thing. Yeah. So they won. They're a really, really good sevens team. Yes. They um, have potential of being a good fifteens team if correct. Uh, a certain gold and green nation stops poaching their players. No names. Yeah. No names. I mean, I think for the Fiji should. See off Romania fairly easily. Here's a here's an interesting matchup. Tonga versus Georgia. Well, Georgia actually did quite well against the the, the baby bucks. I mean, the, I mean, the, I wasn't expecting that. They look yeah. like a bunch of bruises. I think it would be quite a I good game. Georgia could win it. Georgia could win it, but uh, Tonga also uh, a sevens nation, very good with ball in hand. Yeah, could be an interesting game. Yeah. Uh, here's another interesting one. Japan versus Italy. Ooh. Who's Japan's coach this year? Jamie Joseph. He coaches Sunwolves and Japan. Well, I think that could be a very good game. It's a pity it's a quarter to eight in the morning. But anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to get up to watch that one. Um, well, considering Japan's now part of Sanzar, I'll, I'll, I'll say Japan on this one. Yeah, but it's going to be a close game. That'll be a close game. Um, then we have our walkover game, New Zealand versus France. Yeah, I think New Zealand should see the, the French one fairly easily. Yeah. Um, followed by Australia versus Ireland. Okay, so it is the Irish trip. Yeah. Oof. Oh, the lucky charms. Ireland finished second. Yeah, second in the... In the Six Nations. No, or didn't they, they win it? They won. Yeah, they won. the Irish won. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving this to Ireland. Yeah, nine points, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we've got South Africa versus England. Okay, so... We I can't not go South Africa. We can't not go South Africa. But I'm going by five. Five to seven. Yeah. But because, being patriotic, we have to back our boys. Yes. And I think, considering a bulk of our squad stayed back and practiced, yeah, for the English, I think it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a really, really, really like close test match. Yeah, I think so too. Um, then we've got Argentina versus Wales. Oof, Argentina. Uh, if there anything to judge by in terms of how the Jaguar Warriors are playing, I'd actually honestly think that the, the, that Argentina can actually do very well against yeah. Wales. Uh, USA versus Russia. No nukes involved? This isn't a Cold War kind of thing. Um, <laughs> um, keep in mind, USA is now coached by Gary Gold, uh, former Sharks head of rugby. Sharks head of rugby. Yeah. Um, so I think USA should see that one too. Well, we hope so. Well, Russia isn't very well known as a rugby nation. Well, they only play Olympic sports, and since rugby is an Olympic sport. No, I'm pretty sure that... Look, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an interesting game to watch, but... You're going to stay up for it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think DSTV catch-ups for? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag plug. Yeah, hashtag? Whatever. Do I get Whatever. a month free subscription now? Eh? Hey? Do I get a month free subscription? Do we? Do we? Huh? No, no. I still have yeah. Yeah. Uh, then final game of the weekend. Canelia 
Canada versus Scotland. You mean you mean the, the northern Mexicans? Yeah, the northern Mexicans <laughs> versus Scotland. Um, I'm gonna go with Scotland. Yeah, I'm also gonna go for Scotland. I mean, I've... well, the Canada made it to the World Cup. Yeah. Well, Canada has featured in a few World Cups. They featured in the '95 World Cup. They yeah. were in the '99 World they Cup. They weren't in the last one, though. No, I don't think they qualified for the last no. one. But yeah, that's an interesting uh, weekend we've got ahead of us. So I'm keen for that. Mm. All right. Yeah, I think. So, what would you say that Rusty's men should focus on for the week ahead for catching the ball? Yeah, catching. Whether the ball. it's a pass or a kick, just fucking catch the ball. And um, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have Sabu and Corsi and. If he went down chair as our wings, who you, who would you say should be full back for this one? Willie Larue, from Stain, or will like Warwick Gallant? I mean, who would you really, really want? I mean, considering would, I really want I really want Gallant to start, but he's traveling but back. He's traveling he's back. Um, I think that would be a test. He might not start this weekend. He might start next weekend. Um, but then I don't want other other people. I don't rate them as players. No, but we need we need someone to fulfill that back role. Why don't you do it? One, because I'm completely unfit. Two, I'd probably be carried off in a stretcher after the, the first the, tackle. The fullback doesn't do anything. <laughs> the fullback is shorts are clean at the end of the game. I'd probably twist my ankle at the first <laughs> kick into touch. <laughs> Picture you catch the high wall. Okay. Yeah, catch, catch the high wall. I caught it. Okay, now I'm getting kicked for clearance. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> No, um, it is a tough one. I mean, who honestly would you act? I mean, it's a flip of the coin. I mean, I'm glad Kutsia isn't there. Yeah, Andrew like, Kutsia. Andrew Kutsia is not there at all. Yeah. But again, I mean, it's you know we could also throw a Krill in that mix there. Um. Well, um, he's been playing and practicing and. Doing all these drills as an outside centre. Yeah, but come on, you wanted to throw Francis Sane into that. He hasn't played fullback in how many years? It's true, but then the, the only choice is really the roof. <laughs> as long as he doesn't do anything stupid. <laughs> yeah. Look, apparently he's matured overseas. Apparently. Apparently he's also one of the best players in the Viva Premiership. We don't really get to watch the Viva Premiership that much, so that's left to be seen. Um, but I think some congratulations to Castre, I think that's how he says, mm. um, in the top 14. They won the top 14, beating uh, Jake White's very South African Montpellier side. <laughs> um, so congrats to them. And then this is slightly outside of our realm. But I feel like we need to be a bit patriotic here. Mm. Uh, and congrats to uh, CrossFit Valley Road and Cape CrossFit for qualifying for the CrossFit Games. Okay. Um, in um, Madison, Wisconsin. So they are competing as teams or to be the fittest team of four in the world. Wow. Okay. Yeah. The first South African representation in the team competition since 2011. Cheapest. Okay, that's a bunch so, It's more your, more your, what you follow. Yeah, I just figured let's be patriots. <laughs> throw it out there. Let's just throw it out there. And we, we got to the semi finals, I think, for the sevens. The English oh, finals. yeah, uh, how did that go? I don't know. Uh, should probably Google that, but anyway. Yeah, anyway. But anyway, um, I don't think there's much really we can talk about now, um, other than who. We all know that Andre Pollard's going to be out. <laughs> Uh, fly half. My, my, father, my future father-in-law sent me a message um, of him arguing with um, his nephew about how um, the fact that Robert Dupre was on the bench this weekend proves that Andre Pollock's third choice in the pecking order. And I was like, what? Nah. No. I'm, look, the fact that they sent Alton and Robert to the USA definitely <laughs> that was, that's a fight for his second choice. Yeah, the fight for his second choice. Um, Definitely not Yankees, and if Robert De Bruyne can not get charged down. I'm I think that sure. might have been nerves. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it might have been nerves. Um, but Pollard's definitely starting, I would, def I would think. Faf at Scrum Half? You know, it's too early to call. 
he might, he might find that uh, Rusty wants to run everyone through a, one or two training sessions before he names his team. Yeah, because Papier and Fonsel travelled. Yeah. And then... Um, it's Wright and Puff that said behind And then Wright and Puff. So maybe we, we'd start off with, with uh, Cameron Wright. Possibly, but again, this is speculation. It is speculation at this point, but I mean, um, I'm pretty sure that Peter Steff is going to get rested, so... What so we're not a shortage for flanks. No, we're talking about locks. And we're not short for that locks either. Yeah, no Bert, no even Peter Steff's travelling back. <laughs> well, we might find a Jenkins uh, same partnership. Well, Jenkins played in the USA test. He does indeed. I keep forgetting this. Um, <laughs> you see, this thing, we can't speculate because Russ even said himself, players that played in the USA could still start this weekend. Yeah, so could. Jenkins actually had a very, very good game. Which is good. Him and Snayman should always be partnered. And the fact that the Bulls signed Lord Diaga, I think, was a bigger mistake. I think uh, I think Peter Steph also should be brought should be brought into the picture as well. I mean, the guy was really really good. Yeah. In the game against the US, I think he felt I felt he was a little bit hampered by the captaincy role a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, we don't I mean, exactly think he was the best choice of captain to begin with. Um, and that see Kalisi, we were, were awful. Yeah, Kalisi, we were awful. I mean. He puts uh, the Whiteley mole where, he's, where he motivates his team. And he's had a crack the season, so... Well, he, there have been moments where he's been where he's disappeared in key moments, but I think in the green and gold, he's always... Done he's great. always up there, yeah. He's really, really always played well. When he wears his heart when sleeve, I think he's a great... Yeah, I think he was a great option for yeah. for us. Yeah, I mean, he does fit the mold of what a captain I agree with you should there. be. Um, and I mean, having Pollard as a vice would probably be much better. Have them work, him working with the forwards, him working with the back. Yeah, that could work. work. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, so I think just... And this day hasn't actually had a pretty decent outing at Inside Centre as well. It's interesting that you're picking someone above Delende. You're a huge Delende fan. Well, I was a huge fan of Dale Endy when he was actually in form. <laughs> you come on, you must admit that the guy was really, really good at running straight at the fenders. Well, for that whole, and then, whole 2012 season, eh? That was 2013. But yeah, he was hampered by injuries that you know, a player like him lost confidence. Yeah. But he's slowly getting it back. But I mean, having him and Esther Hazen as, as the inside centers is definitely good. Yeah. But I guess that we'll have to wait and see, so that's yeah. all we can do. So like the video, comment on things you'd like to see, because maybe you're getting bored of just our faces. Yeah, and uh, subscribe so that we can never monetize from this. <laughs> never monetize <laughs> ever. <laughs> Look, interesting enough, we have uh, nearly hit the 2,000 uh, minute viewer mark. So. Oh wow, that's actually quite cool. But uh, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when our next video goes up. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks very much for watching and enjoy the international uh, weekend. Three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Hi, my name's Dax. And my name's Nick. And welcome to The Cold Room, our YouTube rugby chat show. And if you hadn't noticed... This is my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! <laughs>